Gary Hart and Armand Hussein. They're a partnership of some sort of management. H and H. They're called a few times. They deny that Hussein got involved in the last Kabuki David Von Eric match. Armand explains David was using a chokehold, not a sleeper. And Armand could tell because his eyesight is very good, very keen eyesight. So he was not interfering. He was merely protesting this illegal choke. Hart promises David will not get a chance to lose to use a sleeper tonight. Good night, sweet Lucy. You're gone. These guys were good. So then Bill Mercer explains David learned the sleep hold from Fritz and other great wrestlers. And then it's time for David to speak. You know, I always love this. Uh, and this has been throughout all of wrestling history and every promotion. You know, so-and-so learned this hold from this person and this person and this person. Benny, I could teach you a choke sleeper in 30 seconds. Uh -huh. You could choke out another living human, and you'd never forget it. Right. Why the fuck would you need to be trained by anybody in particular over a course of years? In fact, multiple people. It's ridiculous. It's a fucking sleeper hold. Any idiot can do it. In fact, the first submission I ever got in, in jiu-jitsu was a, a, a rear naked because I just put on a sleeper hold from pro wrestling and the guy tapped. It's fucking easy, dude. I, I'm pretty Any sure. Any idiot can do it. I believe I took exactly one jujitsu class. And I'm pretty sure I taught you that move. But the point is, even if you hadn't, I am fairly certain just from watching pro wrestling, yes. I could squeeze the guy's of neck, course. given the opportunity, it's ridiculous. and uh, put him out. Ridiculous. Checkmate and Magic Dragon versus Bugsy McGraw and Alma Drill in the longest tag team match of all time. There's Since last week. There was one good thing in this match. It was actually, I think Adidas did the same thing. There is an arm drag mm -hmm. that uh, Alma Drill did. I think Adidas did too. Somebody did it. But it's uh, it's not as spectacular as the classic arm drag where you turn your back to the guy or drop you know, the steamboat and uh, Jack Briscoe did the really awesome one. You, you twist him in over. They're twisted midair and all that. But there is an arm drag where you're like, if you're facing the guy, you're just locked up with him, you grab his right arm with your right arm and you kind of drop to your back and it's like gravity take him over and it's fucking slick and it's really cool. That was it. That's all the positives I have to say about this match. I got a positive. All right. So uh, the heels got the heat on. Uh, which bloke did they get the heat on? Oh, Al Alberto Madrill. Alberto, Alberto Madrill. Yeah. They got the heat on him for uh, for six straight hours, and uh, and they just kept working that goddamn arm. Boy, did they get that arm all right? They worked it, and they did a pump handle, and an arm bar, and an arm ringer. And various other arm holds. And they just beat on him and beat on him. And beat on him and beat on him. And fucking beat on him. And they beat it on him. Is that uh, a word? I don't no. think so. Anyway, that's what it felt like. They <laughs> just fucking beat it on him. But anyway, finally he gives the old hot tag to old Bugsy. Uh. Bugsy's hot tag consists of getting in the ring and running from his opponent while he fixes his no hair. And then he starts doing some punches and shit. And then, uh, and then he, with great difficulty, uh, manages to do a sunset flip. Mm -hmm. And then Alberto Madrill from the top rope jumps over the fucking pile into a fucking sunset flip on Checkmate, which was a big fucking jump. Yeah. And he did it, and he got the pin. And the place went fucking haywire. And the reason they went haywire was not just because the baby faces won, but because, and don't get me wrong, it's not like people thought this was real, but they were invested in it in a different way than we are today. And Bill Mercer screamed, some of the effect of, an amazing comeback from these baby faces. Because to these fans, how the fuck did they win after getting beaten? Like it was a miracle. It was a miracle they managed to come back and win this match. And they reacted like they had seen Our Lady of Fatima. Some fucking miracle. They went crazy. And then this ring announcer says, The winners of this match, Bugsy McGraw and Checkmate. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah, like, he did. Can you get anything right, brother? 
You fuck something up on every show we've watched. Everyone. Yeah. Both. Granted, it's only two, but still, <laughs> every show we've watched, you fuck something up. Either what the finish is or who was the winners. There's a uh, little old man in the front row. Oh, this was, guy. He was wearing red pants yes. and red shirt. The guy mad about the rope grabbing? Oh, my gosh. I want him at every show I go to. He was... He thought it was real, Brian. And it's probably still real to him. That guy was awesome. I'm so, sure Ed knows him. So... I think it was Ed. <laughs> he's always been old? Yeah. <laughs> he's like 90 now, isn't he? So the ring announcer... He's quite old. The Mark Lawrence said the match went 8 minutes, 56 seconds. I'm certain he meant 8 hours and 56 minutes. But regardless, for... The first, uh, the last 30 seconds, Bugsy was in there. Before that, was all Alma Drill. They grabbed him at the start of the match and started beating him and beating him and beating at him and went off forever. The winner of this match, 8 minutes, 52 seconds, Bugsy McGraw and Checkmate. That's actually a very good impression. <laughs> that was requested. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so uh, Bugsy gets his hot tag after standing on this apron for eight and a half minutes. And the most realistic thing he did was when he ran in circles. <laughs> his actual offense looks like third graders playing pro wrestler at recess. And as a third, former third grader who played pro wrestler at recess, I can vouch for this. Mm -hmm. And I know you said nobody thought this was real, but I wrote down here, people thought this was real. Yeah. <laughs> well, they allowed themselves yeah. to suspend their disbelief, which nobody oh, does know, nowadays. Right. There, there were probably a sizable percentage in this crowd that thought it was real. There, there's non non-zero. Yes, it was mm -hmm. definitely non-zero. Yeah, yeah. And they do the double sunset flip thing, and Bronco Lubitsch drops down to one knee and counts three. God, this sucked. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was just fucking terrible. So Bill Mercer explains that David wants the All-Asian Championship from Great Kabuki, but even more, he wants revenge for Kabuki putting Carrie Von Erich on the shelf for six weeks with a knee injury. And here's the bit where all the guys on the roster give their predictions on the flair Carey match. And as you noted, most of the time, all the heels pick Flair, all the baby faces pick Carrie. Bundy picks Flair, experience and desire, desire will give him the edge. Madrill claims that he and Kerry were the world tag team champions at one point. I didn't look that up, but I'm skeptical. Kerry is more than ready to win. Wild Bill Irwin says you need explosiveness to beat Ric Flair. Who was a tag team champion with Kerry? Al Madrill and Kerry Von Erich. Okay, we'll find out. Look that up. Pro prove me an idiot. I'd be happy to prove him wrong. Wild Bill Irwin says Kerry does not have enough explosion in him to beat Ric Flair. Bugsy McGraw does not make a prediction. Says the world championship is everything in this business. Excitement is in the air. And a checkmate says Kerry Von Erich will win if it's a pure wrestling match, and he believes Kerry will win. There's quite, and yes, he's he's English or Welsh or whatever, and he's per completely polite about this. He, he was just a friendly, rule-breaking, cheating bastard. Yeah, he was uh, the NWA American Tag Team Champion American. with Al Madrill. An NWA American Tag Team Champion. Yes. That's probably their top belt in world class, I guess. All right. They just re air the entire Ric Flair, Fritz Von Erich thing from last week, from start to finish. Oh, my God. Great Kabuki and David Von Erich. So. If you're a fan of the claw hold, have I got a match for you. I, I was always told that this claw hold was the most dangerous submission maneuver in all of wrestling. Why did he have it on for seven and a half minutes? Well, at the eight-minute mark, it really becomes dangerous. I see. <laughs> All right. So there was action for the first, like, 30 seconds. David is running wild. He hits one big drop kick, but he tries another one. It misses, and now Kabuki has the, and I'm using this term very liberally, uh, very loosely, heat. Yeah. So he's stomping him and judo chopping him, and he has a move I have seen before, but it's been a while. He attacks the man with... An armpit squeeze. <laughs> you ever been squeezing the armpit? Fucking I sucks, bet brother. it sucks. It actually yeah. does. I'm sure it does. Yeah. A pressure point or whatnot, but God, right it looked goofy. Right there by the peck. That's... Oof. Yeah, yeah. So, uh... It's not effective, because he's got the, the pit squeeze. He's squeezing the, the peck, and it's hurting him, apparently, because he's slowly dropping to his back. And so David applies the iron claw to the gut. 
<laughs> yeah. You do not want your guts clawed. I don't. Mm-mm. I no. don't. But no. somehow Kabuki escapes that and goes to the nerve pinch. Laziest fucking match. <laughs> There's like a two minute struggle to get the iron claw. David finally gets it. Kabuki immediately gets the ropes. So, uh, uh, that's right. David had the claw on him and dragged him to the middle of the ring. And he's just laying there for a while. I totally zoned out. And next thing I looked up, Kabuki had escaped to his offense again. I said, well, how the hell did he get out? I rebounded to check. check and here is exactly what happened. Kabuki's got the, the green mist gimmick. And apparently he does it before the match sometimes because his, his hands are all green. Hands right. are green. So he, his hands are covered in poison, which is apparently legal. He reaches up and rubs poison into David's eyes. And so David is forced to release the claw. And David's outside rubbing his eyes and selling. And Kabuki's alone in the ring. And Kabuki, we have not described him. I don't know how old he was here. I would guess 60-something. He's just a just old man body. And he's got like sweatpants on and no shirt. And I assume black, black knee-high socks on under this. And he stands in the middle of the ring slumped over. He sticks his arms out a little bit and just spins in a circle. And Bill Mercer calls this his victory spin. Yeah. There's another claw. Bronco Lubitsch gets bumped, but still won't go down, mind you. He is just bumped. And so Armand Hussein tries to interfere again, but he gets green misted to a nuclear pop. And suddenly the bell rings. Apparently, the great Kabuki has been disqualified for attempted interference. <laughs> well, I think the other guy was disqualified for misting his own fella. That's what happened. I, I don't fucking know, dude. <laughs> so uh, Mercer announces that David is the new all-Asian champ, and after commercial corrects himself. Yeah. The play by play I forgot the titles can't change things on DQ. Oopsie. Yeah. Orange sold the knee, which is... He got attacked... I don't remember him getting attacked. Matt Menard on said he was attacked the night before, which would have been ROH. So it's if probably ROH. Are you smoking or what's what? happening here? I don't, what the fuck? What is, is happening? I have no Bro. Clue. What is this? <laughs> Dude. I think there's not, I've changed nothing. Smoking in is room. bad enough for you, but you don't need <laughs> right. to do it on the air. What is happening here? God. I'm glad I'm not the only one experiencing this. Did you die? <laughs> I've ascended. Yeah. I don't know. And it looks like it's changing colors, too, which is weird. It's going from red to blue. What the hell's flashing? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, everyone's saying, this, shut man. your lines, dude. They're completely closed. Oh, my God. Maybe you open them. What is... There we go. The sun moved? Well, uh, yeah, the sun... Actually, the... No! Old... Oh. Okay. The sun will continue to move, <laughs> and then we'll be able to see again. We then had uh, Abaddon take on Trish Adora. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.